David Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to follow on from my colleague um, in regard to this matter. And um, I think, first of all, and uh, I think everybody in our community, and especially in this parliament, um, understands the pressures that ACC um, has in the work that they do. It's not a, an easy um, organisation to, to run. It's not an easy um, job uh, for, for members, uh, for, um, for those within ACC to undertake. And um, they have a very vital role in our community because many years ago um, this parliament had made a decision on how you it would deal board, with um, accident and injury, and ACC was born out of that. And as the Green Party mentioned, the Woodhouse principles, and as my colleague just mentioned, um, the fundamental basis of ACC. Um, and within doing that um, complex job, um, sometimes there will be some mistakes made. And um, I'm sure that those involved um, would not like to be able, uh, would like to have their time again and not have made those mistakes. But um, uh, in the end of the day, things like that have and do happen. And then it is up to really this Parliament um, and also the Corporation to deal with those mistakes. And um, and it has um, translated into a bigger result than I guess the, the mistake could have been. Um, if it had been uh, returned and then nothing else taken as action um, by the recipient. Um, but in the end of the day, we're in this position now, and um, I think everybody recognises um, that the pressure that will be on ACC in, in this regard. Um, the Minister has made it quite clear that there will be a review, and that review process will look at ways forward. And I think that's important for this House to focus on and that we, we want to be able to help ACC as much as possible. And um, in any organisation there is a learning and, um, and um, a development of that organisation. And sometimes through the mistakes that are made, um, an organisation or, or individuals can, can learn and grow. And, um, and through this process I'm sure there will be some suggestions made and uh, those suggestions will be for the best interests of the corporation and all those individuals um, that may be claimants or may be working within the corporation. And um, there will be claimants that will feel um, that uh, this information shouldn't have been released or should not have gone to this stage um, of the process in the sense that uh, it's becoming a very public issue for them, and, um, and our thoughts are with those, uh, those people uh, because uh, it is their personal information that they will be very guarded about, and, uh, and rightly so. Um, but it is a situation that has arisen. Um, it is a situation that um, uh, many people that would be involved within the corporation and also those um, individuals that may have had their cases um, exposed in the public here uh, would wish not have to have happened um, and that is something that we cannot change in this House. But we can look forward and we can look at ways that we can deliver better services and a better corporation going forward and I think that's the focus of what we need to do here uh, today and looking forward um, through this situation. Uh, you know, th there are times when uh, we look at a corporation like ACC that has to deal with um, uh, over a million cases a year, which um, is, is a, a big drain on any organisation. And uh, that will stretch the ability of any individual or corporation to be able to deliver um, perfect services all the time. And, and that is something that I think um, we need to be mindful of in the sense that um, the proportionality of what ACC deals with um, is a very big, big organisation and it deals with very sensitive and individual issues and information. And um, nobody wants um, a situation to arise where that personal information becomes in the public arena and it is very unfortunate that that may happen. Um, but in some cases, as in this case, that is the unfortunate result. And uh, we need to be aware of that and look forward to what we can do um, to make sure that these situations don't arise in the future and also um, to be um, aware 
and um, have regard for those that may have been affected during this situation. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, point of order, Chris Hipkin. Uh, Mr Speaker, in the uh, speaking list for an urgent debate, the next call is uh, set down as a five-minute call for the Māori Party, and I'm aware that the Māori Party haven't taken a, a call in the debate. I therefore seek leave for, the next call, for us to move on to the next call on the list, which is a Labour call, a ten-minute call, and if the Māori Party choose to take up their call subsequently, they can have their five-minute call then. Uh, speaking to the point of order, uh, Mr. Michael. Speaker, according to the um, order of debate set out when the when the urgent debate is called by the Labour Party, the Maori Party would have its call at slot number five, and therefore that has already passed. Uh, albeit that the order of calls remains at the spe Speaker's discretion, so I don't think there's actually any need uh, to seek leave for Labour to well, take their well, call now. I am bound to give a five-minute call, the next one, because it hasn't taken place. So the leave, leave has been sought. Is there anyone opposed to that course of action or appears not? Leave is granted. Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the last two.